Hi everyone, welcome to viewers mistakes number 8. This is where viewers send these clips in knowing full well they could have done better, and I rate them from A to F depending on risk. As normal, both parties could have and should have done better. But how do you rate this one? This video has been kindly sponsored by Car Vertical. When we first see this clip, there's obviously a lorry that's turning round in the right hand side road, and it starts to move. But should it have started to move? Well, the obvious answer is no, but this is a foreign lorry driver as we'll see in a minute. So the driver is sat on the left hand side of the cab, and the view of the cyclist could have easily been blocked by these mirrors. It could have also been the case that the driver did see the cyclist and just decided to go anyway. Occasionally lorry drivers have to do this because the road that they're on isn't going to give them a big enough gap where they're not going to inconvenience anyone. But I don't think that was the case on this road. But we also don't know how long this driver's got left on their driving time. I would have held back and helped them out. But my viewer continues and goes and puts themselves in the worst possible spot with this lorry moving. The other lorry coming from the opposite direction isn't helping the situation either. It's pretty obvious that there's a conflict in road space. So there's only one way that this lorry driver's going to move. Thankfully, my viewer worked this out and held back quite quickly, and it was important to do so because that lorry driver wasn't taking any prisoners. And for that reason and how they behaved around a cyclist, they get an F. But my viewer's not far behind with the D. You've got to keep yourself safer than that. This clip is a strong reminder of the dangers involved when lorries and cyclists mix. A little pre-warning for this clip, the dog doesn't get hit. But could my viewer have done anything differently? There were a few clues, and the first one is an obvious one, the brake lights. And my viewer is catching this vehicle up in front while they're braking, and that's dangerous. In this scenario though, it wasn't too bad, it didn't affect much. All it did was probably reduce my viewer's view, because this is approximately the first time that we can see the dog, and it's actually heading away from the road. But it's also virtually impossible to read an animal's body language. You can't tell whether they're just going to change their mind and turn round, which is obviously exactly what happens. The inattentive dog owner gets a D. Situations like this on such busy and fast moving roads can be fatal. All it takes is the wrong person to arrive at the wrong time. If you'd substitute the oncoming car for a 40 ton wagon, my viewer and the passenger may not have walked away from this. But in this situation, my viewer does a great job to avoid everything. Just next time, give yourself a little more space for view. You get a B. This car vertical report shows the aftermath of a very heavy collision. Modern cars are designed with crumple zones to absorb impact and keep occupants safe. And if you combined all the other safety features like airbags, we're a lot safer driving our vehicles today than we were 30 years ago. If we stick with this 30 year old theme, how did you go about purchasing your vehicles back then? I remember purchasing my second vehicle, which was a Vauxhall Cavalier. It was from a private seller in Crosby near to where I lived. And when I went to see it, I was ready to hand over my money straight away. I didn't have a thought about the history of the vehicle or whether it had been in an accident or not. Luckily, the car was a good one. But 30 years further on, I wouldn't take that risk by not doing any research. You can find a little bit of free information if you search the registration of the vehicle you're looking at, but it's not going to be to the extent of these easy to read car vertical reports. This BMW M5 has been damaged beyond repair. It's been categorised as an insurance B category write-off, which means the vehicle cannot be repaired and its shell must be crushed. However, other parts of the vehicle can be salvaged. Even today, there's still a possibility that unscrupulous people will put vehicles like this back on the road and up for sale. The information on these reports is easily obtainable with just a registration or a VIN number, but I would always advise getting an expert to check out the vehicle you're looking at before your final decision. We didn't have the services of Car Vertical 30 years ago, but nowadays it can be a part of a process to give you that peace of mind. Please check out my link in the description, and by using the promo code Ashley when you're checking out your next potential purchase, you can save yourself 10%. Thanks, Car Vertical.
With this clip, we're watching the red car that pulls out in the distance. They emerge straight into lane two, and they don't accelerate whatsoever. My viewers' collision avoidance systems on the car activate, but luckily they're able to slow down enough in time. This is really dangerous for people catching up behind who aren't paying attention. And because of this, the driver of the red car gets an E. I actually think my viewer did a pretty good job. They saw the vehicle early, they saw the problem and fixed it. But they still get an E also for playing this music. But I have to give myself an E. For playing that little snippet, it's now going to be stuck in your head for the next two hours. Search Venga Boys We Like To Party if you didn't know it. We've got no footage before this point, but my viewers in the process of making a mistake. They're moving back to the left just as a road's emerging onto this motorway. And as we'll see, it quickly shuts down options for my viewer to take. As you can see, my viewer left themselves with very few options. In fact, the only option they had would be to slow down. A self-inflicted mistake gets my viewer a B, but sometimes it'll end up differently. What if someone emerging makes a mistake like my viewer does here? This car's coming over the flyover, and my viewer rashly changes lanes where they don't need to. And it's a good job the van in the outside lane sees the problem and holds back. Try and avoid lane changing when the complexity of the junction is high. You don't want to rely on others to help you out. My viewer does this all on his own. At this point, he realised he got an F. Holy shit. Have you seen the scooter rider yet? I'll give you a couple of moments to have a look around. Don't worry, it was a difficult one. My viewer only spotted them at the last moment also. That was a close call. Let's see whether anyone could have done anything differently. If we look closely, the scooter rider wasn't visible whatsoever. And this means the scooter rider was riding way too close to the vehicle. But at least they had the common sense to hold back until they'd been seen. Take note, cycling Twitter. But this rider still gets a C. As does my viewer, even though they sorted this out reasonably, they could have just maybe crept for a little longer, a little slower, and that gives you more time to observe. As normal, always things to improve. Again, no one else involved in this clip apart from my viewer. I think they look at the wrong section of lights that change and assume it's for them. Quite simply, very dangerous. My viewer gets an F. Interestingly, jumping a set of lights when you didn't realise is much more dangerous than when you did. There's less observations. Don't do either, though. For this final clip, we're going to look at the dangers of someone flashing the lights, and other people acting upon that flash. It's my viewer that flashes the lights, and it's the junction on the right that we're watching. That was really close. Don't forget, as with all these clips, my viewers hold their hands up and realise the mistake that they've made. But let's go through this in a little more detail and see what went on. First of all, let's have a look to see where my viewer flashed the lights and how quickly the car on the right reacted. It is quite difficult to spot, but we're going to be watching the number plate of the vehicle in front. I've slowed the footage down so it's easier to spot. There you go, you can see the reflection. Now watch to see just how quickly the vehicle on the right hand side takes to start to move. How could they miss that oncoming car? Well simply, people feel compelled to go when they see the flash, so this is really dangerous. So my viewer gets a D, but the driver that just emerged without looking is the worse offender. 
they get an F. Hopefully this highlights the dangers of flashing your lights to let someone go. Oncoming car did well. They get an A. I'd like to say a massive thanks to all my viewers for having the courage to send in their own mistakes. So much can be learnt from these clips, even if you don't agree with my ratings. Keep safe, and I hope to see you next time.